Hey everyone, it's Nicole the Math Lady. I'm here to give you a walkthrough of the Algebra Half Curriculum. Now I know when you're deciding on a new curriculum or when you're starting a new curriculum, it can be a little difficult to figure out like what are all of these textbooks and how do they work together? So I am going to do three things with you. I'm going to tell you who this book is for. I'm going to show you which books you need. And then I'm going to show you a little bit about what each book contains and how it's structured. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's first start out by talking about the name, Algebra Half. What does that mean? And who's it for? All right, so your student should be taking 8-7 as the pre-algebra class, right? Okay, once they take 8-7 and they're doing well in it, meaning like they're, you know, doing 90% or greater on the test, you know, algebra, pre-algebra stuff makes sense to them, then they are ready for their next textbook, which is supposed to be Algebra 1. So it goes 8, 7, then Algebra 1. Okay, now, if your student has not really nailed down the pre-algebra content, they are going to have some challenges in Algebra 1. And that is why Algebra Half was created. It was created as like a stair step to Algebra 1. So, if you see that your student is maybe struggling a little bit with pre-algebra, 8, 7 has been, you know, a little bit of a challenge for them, it's not quite laid down, do not hesitate in moving to Algebra Half. Some people feel like, oh, well, I'm going to take an extra year. Well, here's the deal. If they are having challenges with pre-algebra, Algebra 1 is going to be tough for them, and you're going to end up reviewing those concepts anyway. So let's do it the right way, without stress, without tears. Put them into Algebra Half, let them get really flat on those pre-algebra concepts, and then they'll be ready for Algebra 1. Let's talk about the different books that you're going to need to do the Algebra Half curriculum. There are four of them. Yup, I said it, four of them. <laughs> All right, let's start with this. Algebra Half Student Textbook. Okay, as with everything else, well, most other books, I should say, in the Saxon Math series, there isn't a particular, like, separate facilitator's guide or teacher's guide. Everybody works out of the same book, students and teachers alike. Okay, Algebra Half Student Textbook. Then we have, I'm going to do the test forms next. It's this little booklet. We'll talk about it. Then we have the homeschool packet. Yep, you're going to need this too. It's a nice little thin booklet. And then we have the solutions manual. Okay, I'm going to digitally put it in here because I can't find my solutions manual at the moment. That means somebody in this house must be using it. <laughs> but the solutions manual, we're going to go through all four of these and tell you exactly what's in them and why you need them. Let's first start out by talking about that student textbook. So it's broken down into 123 lessons, and there are 10 additional topics. And then each lesson has three parts. So there's the part that has the new material, then there's something called the practice, and there's something called the problem set. Let's take a look at each of those. The new material. Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's where the new concept is taught for the day. Now, there's three ways you could go about getting this thing taught, okay? Now, the first thing is you could read the lesson yourself and teach your student. You could also give your student the textbook and let them teach themselves, because, you know, they are a little older now. Or you could have them watch my videos. I'm Nicole the Math Lady, as I said, and I have pre-recorded each and every lesson in this textbook. So your students could watch it anytime they'd like, and, you know, I hear they're pretty good. I'm just saying. <laughs> they generally last around 7 to 12 minutes. So when we start getting up into algebra, they get a little bit longer, but they're still pretty, uh, you know, to the point, fairly concise. 7 to 12 minutes. Second part of that lesson is called the practice. And the practice is where they just give you a couple of problems to practice what you just learned of that new material. Now, in the textbook, there isn't any space for your student to work out the actual problems. So I just say keep a little spiral notebook next to you while you're working, and they can put their work in there. Okay? Just takes about five to ten minutes to do some of these problems. And now I have found that some students are ready to jump right into the practice after they learn the new material. Other students need a little bit extra hand-holding to make sure that they've got the steps down right. So I have, on the Nicole the Math Lady platform, an extra optional practice video. And here's how it works. I'll show the students a problem and I'll say, go ahead and try it for yourself. So they'll do the work. And then when they hit play again, they see me work out the problem step by step. 
The reason this is a good thing is they can see if they made a mistake exactly where they went wrong and they can put in that correction before anything has solidified in their brain incorrectly, which is where we want to try to catch. We want to give them that immediate feedback so they're like, oh, I see the right way to do it. Okay, so again, it's optional. Some students do it, some students don't. Some students will actually keep it for like summer work and they'll have some extra practice problems. The third part of the lesson is called the problem set. And this is where they give the students 30 practice problems that are done in a spiral review. What is a spiral review? Well, it means you might have some practice problems from today's lesson, some from yesterday, some from last week's. They're constantly cycling back to previous lessons to give the students practice on those problems. Why? Well, this is math. Everything builds upon everything else. So we need them not to forget what they're learning. So they're constantly revisiting things from the past. All right. Now, in that uh, pr problem set, you will see that there's a number underneath the problem number. It's in parentheses. That number tells you which lesson that this problem originally came from. That way, if your student's having any problems, they can head back to that lesson or rewatch the video to get some help. And now, there's a special feature that we have on the Nicole the Math Lady platform that I want to tell you about. It's called online grading. And this is where your students can enter their answers to their problem set and the practice and get immediate feedback as to whether that problem is correct or incorrect, or whether their answer to it is correct or incorrect. Now, the reason this is cool is because when we're doing math, we want the students to know immediately if they're doing the right thing. Because if not, now we're pummeling things into their brain that aren't correct. And you know how hard it is to turn something around once you've taught somebody something, right? So we want to teach it to them correctly. So how it works, students put their answer in, it tells them if it's correct, if it's correct, we do a little dance. <laughs> if it's incorrect, we give them some retries. Now retries allow the student to reattempt the problem and we will give them, remember the number in parentheses I told you about? We put it right over to the side as a link. Students click on it and the window opens up and it shows them the video again. So if they wanna try to correct the problem on their own, which is what we want them to do, right? They can do it. And I find, particularly at this age, students are like, uh-uh, I'm not leaving these points on the table. They do the work to try to correct the problem because we've given them the tools. So online grading is great for students. It's also great for parents because I know that grading can be a challenge, right? You got to stay on top of grading. You just can't let that sit to the end of the week. So what happens after the student's done is it sends you an email report right away. You can see how they did on every single question, whether they did it on the first try or whether it took them five retries or whether they never got it correct. But now you know as a parent exactly where to focus. So your time is spent on reteaching or helping them with something that they're confused on versus just grading all of the paperwork. So I just wanted to tell you about that because that'll help you out. There's a few extra things that I want to tell you that are in this textbook. At the beginning of the book, there's a letter from the author, from John Saxon, telling you a little bit about the Saxon math philosophy. Definitely worth the read. Now, at the back of the book, there's a few goodies. There's a glossary. Um, the answers to the practice section, remember those problems that we did of just today's material? The odd numbers are at the back of the book, so just be aware that those are there. And then there's also like a page on the back cover that has like abbreviations and conversions, some formulas, you know, kind of like a quick cheat sheet for some of these things. Okay, so that is the student textbook. Let's talk about that second book I mentioned, the test forms. Remember, this is a little booklet, right? It's a little paperback booklet where all of the tests that you're supposed to give your student live. They have a schedule at the front of the book that tells you when to give the tests. It's about every four lessons I have found, okay? Now, it's not a ton of space to do work in that booklet, so again, I recommend just keeping a spiral notebook where your students can work out their problems. Now, at the back, there's a couple of sheets where they can do that, but I don't think it's very much. You definitely would have to like photocopy it to use it. So again, spiral notebook that you can buy at the dollar store, easy peasy. Okay, the third one is the homeschool packet. All right, this is an interesting one because it's half of the book are the answers and a detailed walkthrough of the test problems, which is great. The second half of the book are just the answers without a detailed walkthrough of the problem set. So here's the deal. When you hit algebra, you really begin to need detailed walkthroughs of the problems. I mean, unless you want to work out all that math yourself, 
just going and seeing just the answer is not that helpful. So I find that the front of the book really helpful. The second half of the book, not that helpful because it just has the answers. I need to see the work, which is why we go to the fourth book, which is the solutions manual. The solutions manual is where you will find that detailed walkthrough of the problem set. Now, there isn't a detailed walkthrough of the practice. So, you know, but they think by that point, students should, you know, be able to kind of work out those problems on their own, just an FYI. It's of the problem set, those 30 problems, the detailed walkthrough. You definitely are going to need a solutions manual once you hit algebra, for sure. And that's it. That is my walkthrough of the algebra half curriculum. Remember, if your student is, you know, not quite there on the pre-algebra concepts, do not hesitate to do this textbook. This textbook was designed for your student then. We're going to get them really tight on those algebra pre-algebra concepts, and that way they will be ready for Algebra 1. No tears, only happiness doing Algebra 1. I'm all for that. That's all I have for you today. It's Nicole the Math Lady. I hope this walkthrough has been helpful. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>